I'm going to start a series here in uh, June and probably it might run through July, I don't know, maybe longer. I'm going to be going through the parameters that are adjustable in the calibration. So these are things that are tailored to make the engine work correctly in the vehicle's chassis. And uh, the ECM can control many functions, but it, it needs to know what it's connected to, what it has to control. It needs to know things like, is there an automatic transmission? Do I need to talk to it? Where do I go to talk to it? That would be multiplexing. And uh, how fast does, is the vehicle allowed to go before I stop it from going any faster? So the ECM, if you want to think about it that way, it's really the brain of the unit. And the parameters are what make that engine work really well in the chassis it's in. And if they're set right, the truck runs like a dream. Everything works smooth. If they're set wrong, you can have all kinds of problems from uh, jerky to this function doesn't work, after treatment issues all the time, frequent regen, uh, lights coming on, you have no reason, why, no idea why they're coming on, on and on. So by the time we get done going through these parameters, you're going to understand what they do, what they mean, and for the most part, how to set them. You're not going to understand how to set everything because there's some things that you're going to need to call and talk to uh, probably engineering or someone that, that uh, a sales guy that's trained in, in setting those so that they get set correctly. So uh, without any further ado, we're going to get started. The first, the first part of the parameters is called the system ID. That's very important to me anyway, and should be to you. There are just a very few things you can change in there, but there's a lot of information in there. So when we finish with this video, you're going to know exactly what is in the system ID. Okay, so let's get going. Okay, so the first thing you need to know is the icons. These icons are called toolboxes. Now you see on the toolbox, there's a lock. If the toolbox lock is locked, you can't adjust anything in this group. If it's unlocked, you can. Okay, so you can also see that there is a minus in front of system ID and data plate. That minus means that it's open. If you click that, it'll turn into a plus and everything on this page will disappear inside of system ID and data plate. And all you'll see is that and the next main group. So in Insight, you can go up to, once you get to the screen in Insight, you can go up to uh, View and then click on Expand All. And these will all open up and you'll have like 11 pages of them to scroll through. Or you can go View, Unexpand. And then you'll just see probably about 20 of these red toolboxes all the way down the page with pluses in front of them. So that's expanding and unexpanding. And if you just want to go to one group, you can leave them all unexpanded and just scroll down and click the plus in front of the group you want to work with. Okay. Next, we have a secondary icon in front of the parameter that you can sometimes change. Now you can see that there's a screwdriver and in this case the screwdriver is leaning to the left. That means that that parameter is locked and you can't change it. If you can change it, the screwdriver will be, will be leaning away from the lock to the right. And then you can go over to the ECM value column which is over in the middle, and you can change the value in that column to the appropriate value. Now over here is an exciting new toolbox, and it's called 
after treatment information. And then under that, you've got system one information. The reason they have system one information is on some of the big V engines, there's two separate after treatment systems, one for each bank. So that'd be system one, system two. The exciting thing is under system one information, under after treatment information, there's a part number and that part number over in the middle is A061Y221. And that would be, when you're looking up after treatment, your ETN number, okay? And underneath that's a serial number. So you could use the serial number because the, the search field in parts.com, in uh, parts.comas.com will accept after treatment serial numbers or the after treatment emissions number, ETN. Okay, and uh, so I was so happy to see that with that A061Y221, you can find a lot of information about the SCR element, the DPF element, and other parts in the after treatment system. So that's a great thing. These two fields are not user changeable. Next field, here we have calibration information. So under that is calibration software phase. You don't need to worry about that number. Rarely will you ever be asked about that number. And pretty much the only people that ever have to deal with it would be mechanics that work at a, at a common sales and service or what we used to call distributorships. And that was, uh, rarely did we have to deal with it. Under that is calibration time date stamp. That's another number you don't really need to worry about or know. Uh, it's just a date stamp for, the, um, for when the calibration was written. It's a cryptic number. Next is the DO option, 11485. Uh, when you're looking up calibrations, the two things you're concerned with are ECM code first and then DO option. A DO option is, a DO means dealer option. So uh, as an example, so you know what that is, if, if uh, John's, John's chipper company built 70 chippers and they went to Cummins and said, we need an ECM calibration that'll make the engine run this way and we need to put it in 70 machines. Cummins would send an application engineer out and he would put a basic calibration in the first machine and the customer would run the machine through its paces. And then as the machine fell on its face, the engine fell on its face, whatever, the application engineer would make adjustments to the calibration because he has the ability to unlock certain parts of it. And he would make adjustments to it so that it would make the engine perform correctly in the machine. Now, he doesn't change emissions or horsepower, maximum horsepower, maximum torque, but he might be able to change the torque curve. He, he'd be able to certainly maybe add uh, a parameter choice that might be needed for the machine, like safety switch on, safety switch off. And when he gathers all this information up, he sends that report to Cummins and they send it to the software people and they write a calibration for that customer and they assign that calibration a dealer option number. And that's what that is. So if you're putting, especially in industrial stuff, calibrations in say a failed ECM and you don't, you don't know what the code was, you have, to, you have to look up DO option and make sure that that's right or you could have all kinds of problems with the machine running. Trucks, not so much, but uh, machines, yes. The ECM code is the basic software package that makes the ECM wake up, know what engine it's got, and know what the fueling is, the torque is, the horsepower is. Uh, that makes the engine what it is. It, it, the ECM code decides whether the engine's a 400 or a 605 whether it has 1,650 foot-pounds of torque 
whether it has uh, 2,250 foot-pounds of torque. And the ECM codes are what we are updating when we update the calibration. The ECM code and the calibration are the same thing, just a different name for the same thing. Other options is usually blank. SC option, you'll see that on older units. Sometimes that comes into play with uh, off-road stuff. The old select and select plus, you looked up the SC code, you didn't look up ECM code. And the SC, SC option was the ECM code back in those days. But today, um, pretty much the ECM code's all you worry about. The next section, customer information. This is also called Engine Shop Joe's Pet Peeve section because the Cummins does not know who the customer is when they build the engine. So they will put in generic information, okay? And then that generic information stays there. So someone sends me information for help and I have no idea what unit it is. I have no idea who the customer is. I have no idea where it is, uh, especially if I get it in email. Uh, if you're working in a fleet that has 200 dump trucks, it'd be nice to know which dump truck you're talking about. Or if they have 50 tractors, it'd be nice to know what tractor you're talking about because I, for one, kept a history, a brief one, but a history of everything that I was involved in and so if there was another problem with that unit, I could go back and refer and see what the earlier problem was. So under customer information, you can edit customer location, customer name, and customer unit number. So in here, I made up uh, three values. I put in Cleveland, Ohio. I put in all crane, and I put in X3288. So it could be uh, Atlanta, Georgia. It could be Mr. Crane. It could be Y203, whatever. But fill that in, and you have to fill that in here in this field for it to stay in there, and it will stay forever unless someone changes it. So please fill that in, even if it's just for yourself. Uh, it'll make life easier down the road if this comes back. Our next section is ECM information. If you want to know what platform you're working on, look at ECM name. In this case, this was a 2450. Next, the most important thing you need to know is ECM part number. Not serial number, part number. So when you come in here, if you're going to be calibrating the ECM, write down the ECM part number. In this case, it's 557 two, three, nine, one. Okay. So you can't edit any of that, but you need to know the ECM part number if you're going to be calibrating the ECM. The next section is engine information. It has the engine's build date, the engine's make, the engine model, which if you look, you'll see the model is a really screwy number. So uh, it doesn't help you much. It's a technical number and then the, the engine serial number. Now, if you put a new ECM on a truck, these fields are all blank until you calibrate it. But engine serial number will always fill as zero. So make sure that you go in and edit the engine serial number, which you're allowed to edit. You, I believe you can also edit the build date if you put a recon ECM on. Uh, so, don't forget, because an ECM image that someone sends you for help that has a zero for engine number, well, good luck looking up parts for that or troubleshooting procedures. And I see that a lot. When people put recon ECMs on, they do not realize they have to go in and electronically change this number. Okay? So do that for Engine Shop Joe. Okay, next. Next, we have system information. This is all put in by the calibration. You cannot change it.
but there's some important things down here. The advertised power is in here at the advertised RPM. So this engine is 605 horse at 1950 RPM. The control parts list, very, very important. We'll talk about the control parts list later on in another video, but it's worth jotting down. You can also find a control parts list number on the engine tag, and you can also find it on the ECM tag if it's the original ECM built with the engine. Okay, the fuel code doesn't really mean anything on an on-highway truck with a diesel engine in it. So it's just a cryptic number. If you get into natural gas and some, some of the other engines, and I don't know about, nitri uh, about the uh, hydrogen engine, that's, in the, that's still in the future. Uh, but for now, fuel code doesn't mean anything. Uh, peak torque, it tells you, is, um, at two, as, is 2,050 foot-pounds. Governed RPM, above that is 2,000 RPM. And peak torque RPM is 1,000 RPM on this engine. So if the driver says to you, if I got my foot in it and I'm going up a hill, where's it going to pull the hardest? You can tell him at 1,000 RPM, and he'll go, I can't pull it down that low. Well, yes, you can, because right below that, probably at 950, the ECM is going to shut the power off if the driver doesn't shift. If this has got an, uh, an Eaton Automatic or Ultra Shift in it, it'll shift for him at the appropriate time. If it's got a stick, he can pull it down to 1,000 as long as the engine can maintain that RPM and not overheat. No check engine lights or stop lights come on. Water temperature stays below uh, 210. And oil temperature stays under about uh, 240. You could go up a mountain at 1,000 RPM if the engine will do it. Okay? So uh, none of those things are changeable, but that's what they are. What's most important in here? Control parts list. Remember that. Left we have vehicle or OEM information. Under here, the most important field is the vehicle identification number or equipment serial number, also called the VIN. If you have after treatment on a truck, the VIN has to be filled in or you will have a fault code. Uh, the system looks for that at Keon because it looks at the after treatment part number and the VIN number. So uh, make sure that you have the VIN completely and correctly filled in on this field if you put an ECM on a truck, a recon that you calibrate. And in which case you'll be able to put in the equipment year, the VIN, the OEM name, and the OEM model. But that'll all become filled, it'll all come filled when the truck's new. And it should be put in by the, uh, by the dealer when they get the truck before your company or you receive it, okay? So that is the system ID and data plate and all the information inside of it. And now you know everything that you need to know about that portion of the parameters. Next time we'll move down to the next few sections and we'll talk about all those in depth. Thanks for joining me on Engine Shop Joe.